All right, what's going on, guys? So with the release of Gate of Elodinus and 110 Mining and Smithing, the need for Taga's Core Hammer has gone up pretty dramatically. So I figured now would be a great time to put out a Krosis guide. Krosis is not very difficult. The biggest thing is that the fight has a lot of moving parts, but once you get it down to once, every kill goes exactly the same. So you only ever need to get one clean kill before it makes sense which I think makes it a lot easier in some ways than a boss like Gate of Eldinas because a gate, if you want to get faster and faster kills, you introduce a lot more opportunities for you to make mistakes. At Krosis, that's not really the case. Four-man Krosis is the main way that people kill this boss. You can do masses and you can do two-mans once you're experienced. This guide specifically is going to be about four-mans, but in four-mans, you can't really speed up kills. Basically, all of your kills are going to be around six minutes and 30 seconds. So in terms of your gear, it is going to depend a lot on the style that you're using. Essentially, you want to use your elite skilling outfit that corresponds with the style that you want to use. And for woodcutting and mining, and I believe fishing, you want to use the skill capes for. Let me just double check that. Okay, I lied. Only the mining and fishing are the skill capes that you actually want to be wearing if you're using those styles. But if you are using those styles, it's a pretty substantial increase to your kill speeds or not necessarily your kill speeds because you do do a lot of waiting around. But yeah, definitely if you're doing mining, then you want to use full Magic Golem set or just any of the Magic Golem sets, you know, Sapphire, Ruby, Emerald. If you don't have all the combined outfit, then you want to use a mining cape. If you are using fishing, you want to use a shark outfit in the fishing cape. For woodcutting, you just want to use the sentinel outfit and for hunter you want to use the trapper outfit for your main hand you just want to wield whatever item you're using that matches your style bringing all the other styles helps out quite a bit but it's not necessary at all also if you don't have an augmentable pickaxe for instance you can just use the one on your tool belt so in the kill i'm going to show i have a primal pickaxe on my tool belt so i don't get anything by showing you guys of me not you using this but this isn't going to do like more damage than probably pickaxe the kill speeds would be exactly the same i am bringing grace of the elves because it's a skilling boss so more money is more better same thing with brute brutes of the gods these can both proc so you bring them both because more money is more better if you want to use a ring of whispers you can but it's really not necessary the only skill that i could kind of recommend it for is mining because mining is the slowest of the four skills but I would just use a luck ring if you have it. It doesn't really matter that much. Now, once you're experienced, you want to bring all four of the main hands for the last mechanic, which is the center. In the center, it can be any of the four skills, and then just using a main hand of the appropriate skill does improve your kill speeds a little bit, and it improves your contribution. Besides that, you want super stores. Typically, I would say bring three to four super stores. I only bring one because I'm very comfortable here. But until you're comfortable here, you want to bring three to four super stores. This is because the way that Krosis kills you is it drains your stats. If your stats get drained below a certain amount, it just kicks you out of the fight. Super stores counteract that stat drain. So that's why you bring them. Once you get more comfortable here, you'll basically never use these. But it is worth keeping in mind that you still should bring one just for emergencies. I have two rune pouches. This is to cast Crystal Mask. Crystal Mask is really good because it prevents one instance of Krosis reducing your stats. So whenever any of the blobs spawn in, it'll protect you from that reducing your stats. Whenever one of the bombs drop on you, it'll protect the first instance of stat reduction from that. And if you get hit by like a mushroom or something, it'll protect the first instance of stat reduction. Same thing where if you move incorrectly in the mushroom field, Granted, the Mushroom Field damages you really fast, so it's not going to matter that much for protecting you there. But again, it is worth keeping that in mind. Now, the best offhand and arguably the most important piece of equipment that you can use here is Sauna's Fire Torch. This is so powerful because it consumes as an infinite fire source for when you get hit by the Sticky Mushrooms attack. The Sticky Fungi, what it does is it prevents you from moving and also will slowly drain your stats until you clear it. If you don't have Sana's Fire Torch and you're a main, bringing Protean Logs is very good. Alternatively, you can also burn the main resource that you're gathering from the node, but it is highly recommended that you bring either some logs 
for every kill, or you bring protean logs. Another part of the fight, you're going to need to repair the statue. The Artificer's Measure gives you a chance to get four times progress on the statue. Not necessary at all, but it is nice. Finally, you want to bring a Gathering Familiar that increases your level. Just match it to whatever the main style you're using is. So I typically do mining, so I have a Gargoyle. This doesn't super matter. Like if you don't want to use a Gargoyle and you want to use a Lava Golem or something, or a Lava Titan rather, you totally can. Not a huge deal either way. You just want to bring something here to help with your gathering. You could bring a Water Fiend. I don't think it's necessary. And especially because generally you have an excess of resources. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about bringing a Water Fiend. I forgot to mention it, but I do have a perfect plus potion. This is useful for woodcutting and fishing. So it is worth bringing if you have those skills available or if those are the skills that you're working on. Rather. But okay, let's start a kill. So I am using an aura here. You just want to use a gathering aura that increases your success chance. I believe that's what all the gathering auras do. So I don't know why I specified that, but you just want to use a gathering aura. I am using the legendary mining aura. It does not matter whether or not you have this. It will slightly speed up your kill. The first thing that happens in a kill is usually the person who is on the hunter node will start the kill because hunter is the fastest node. And you will see here that there are three parts of this carcass. There's this glowing part, there's this regular part, and then there's the blackened part. The blackened part will give you rotted fungus. You don't want any of that, at least not until later on in the fight. The regular part will just give you the main resource, but you won't get as much contribution. And the glowing part will give you the most contribution. Typically, you always want to hit the glowing part. So when I actually start the kill, you'll see that's what I'm doing. I'm pretty much only hitting the glowing part. Now, this interface up here, this is Croesus Helper. It is a plugin you can get for Alt-1 Toolkit. Because Croesus attacks at certain time intervals, this just keeps track of those time intervals. If you wanted to, you could write them down in because those numbers are on the wiki and then you would just be able to do the same thing even on your first kill. But this just does that for you. If you don't feel comfortable using this, that's totally fine. You can just look at Croesus and then again, her mechanics happen in the same order at the same time. So yeah, with these kills, I'm going to assume that you're going to use Croesus Helper and I highly recommend that you do use it. Again, it's all approved by Jagex. You don't need to worry about you know getting in trouble or anything you're good to use Alt-1 Toolkit, but this guide moving forward is just gonna assume that you are using Croesus Helper. Now we are going to start the kill and I will go over what I'm doing and why. Okay, so here I am just clicking on the glowing one. It gives you the most contribution points, so that's why you're doing it, and it clears out this node the fastest. First bomb falls at 13 seconds, so I'm going to click off and then click back on just to drop the bomb, not where I'm working. The next mechanic that happens is fifth fairy ring. It will teleport you to anywhere in the arena randomly if you stay there once the fairy ring finishes forming. So just move, just literally only need to move one square. Next mechanic is slimes. As long as crystal mask is on, you could ignore this. The slime will hit you. You just put crystal mask back on. Now here you see I've gathered 16 resources. You only need 15 to repair the statue, but you get 16 in case while transporting resources, someone messes up. Because I have 16, I'm going to deposit all of them in the deposit box next to me, and then I'm going to go back and gather 16 more. Because the yellow bomb is spawning, I'm gonna like wait a little bit to drop it, not where I'm working. And then here, now we're gathering 16. Typically, you will not finish gathering your 16 before this node is depleted. Also, the next mechanic is a stun. You just anticipate that. But yeah, you won't finish gathering a 16 before this node is depleted. So these dead guards is where you want to start gathering from next. That mechanic right there was the sticky fungus mechanic. Because I had a Santa's fire torch, it cleared it instantly. If you don't have a Santa's fire torch, you either need the timber from the woodcutting node, or you need to have the logs in your inventory. If you are going to use logs, you're gonna have to bank after every kill, which is very annoying, but it is what it is.
Next attack is going to be a bomb, so we're just going to move once the bomb falls. I get kind of greedy here and try to finish this out, but I realize it's not going to work, so I should just drop the bombs somewhere else. Okay, so now I have 16, we're going to move to the next place. The way this method works is in four mans, you want to do the 2-1 method. What that means is you want to move two quadrants and then one quadrant. Which quadrant you move to first is preference. My personal preference is to cross the mushroom field first, which is right here, and then cross the other mushrooms that you climb over second. So if I was starting on the wood cutting, I would go in north and then east, but because I'm starting on mining, I'm going north and then west. Now it is highly recommended that you have dive and or double surge for this. If you don't have these, it's gonna make this a lot more annoying and you're gonna waste a lot of time just waiting around for this mechanic. But what you wanna do is if you have dive, you wanna stand on the bottom step where I just clicked and then dive to the other side and surge. If you don't have dive, you actually want to walk one step here, like one step back, click one step forward so you're facing the mushroom patch, then surge and surge again. So here you see, I dive and then surge. And then if you do it in that order, you get to do this diagonal surge here, which saves you a few seconds. Now for these mushrooms, you only wanna climb over the glowing ones. If you climb over the ones that aren't glowing, it'll rot one of your fungus and it will drain your stats. You only need to click on these once. If you click on them more than once, it'll instantly climb you back over. So just make sure you click on it once. I actually think I make that mistake here. I'm not sure though. Yeah, yeah, I make that mistake here. So that's why you don't do, do that. So now that we've gone halfway around, this is the two. We're going to deposit all of the ones in our inventory into the statue and then withdraw from the storage spot. Also, the next mechanic is Blue Bomb. Now, the direction you go in from here is going to depend on the pathing that you took when you did your first two. Where you want to end up is one quadrant clockwise from where you started. So because I started in mining, I wanted to end up in woodcutting. If I started in woodcutting and I crossed the mushroom patch, I would go north and then east, and then I would go back west to the hunting spot. If I were to start in mining, which is why I did start, I would go north and then east, and then I would go south to end up in the woodcutting spot. So as to summarize, if you end up going clockwise, the first two quadrants, you want to go clockwise the last quadrant. If you go counterclockwise the first two quadrants, you want to go clockwise the last quadrant. Then we're going to cross this, surge and then dive. We're gonna deposit this into this statue. And then because Blue Bomb was the last mechanic, we have a stun coming up. We're just going to anticipate that. And we have the green energy fungus. The energy fungus is where you're going to get the vast majority of your contribution points. So you see here, this guy got hit with the sticky fungus. You want to make sure that if you get hit, you clear it because it will interrupt you. What some people do is they'll just tank this so that they can make sure they get all the energy for the energy fungus. I haven't found that to be necessary. Normally, you just clear it, click on the energy fungus, and then you're good to go. But yeah, this is where you're gonna get most of your contribution, so make sure that you're heading towards mid when you see the blue bomb. Two mechanics after blue bomb, the energy fungus spawns. So the alt one timer can't tell when you finish the energy fungus. There isn't like an in-chat thing that says, hey, you finished this. So you need to manually click this button up here as soon as your character stands upright. If you're a little bit early or a little bit late, it's not a big deal. You just want a general idea of when stuff is going to spawn. But make sure you do that because it's going to make following the rest of the fight a lot easier. Okay, so now we need to rot this node. We do this because it gives us contribution and it prevents this from regenerating as fast. If you don't rot the node, there is a possibility that it fully regenerates, which will dramatically hurt your chances of succeeding in a kill. This is the woodcutting node, so I'm putting on my hatchet. Again, not necessary. I stand on this side of the dead lumberage guard because when the red bomb comes, I can go to the other side of it and just keep mining it. Don't have to worry about the lumberage guard. Or don't have to worry about the red bomb, rather. Okay, once you have 10, you can click on these in order to rot them. So once you have 10 of any resource, you can just 
rot all of them one at a time. You see here, poison fungus, slow down the regrowth. Then we put on our artifices and measures and we click on the statue. Now this part is super simple. Just click on the statue and wait for it to finish. Now for the bombs, you don't have to dodge them immediately. You saw there, I just waited for it to actually land before I moved. If you wanted to, that is something that you could do. You could see this guy up here, he's like standing inside the bomb and it's draining his stats relatively quickly. So that's why you do want to move. Crystal Mask eats the first instance of drain, but you can see if you're just standing in it, your stats are going to drain very quickly. So stun's coming, so we're just going to anticipate. Sticky fungi is coming. It didn't tar target me, so that's fine. Whenever sticky fungi happens, it only hits two people. So now my statue is rebuilt. So what I do is I pray this until it's two ticks away from finishing, which is here. Once it's two ticks away from finishing, or as it gets to two ticks away from finishing, you want to click off. This is because clicking off takes one tick. So you see here, I spam clicked off, and then I got one extra tick. If your statue fills up, it'll instantly open the, the core. That's not the worst thing ever, but it can mess up a kill, especially if other people are making mistakes. So if you're not comfortable doing that, you can pray it to like three quarters and then click off. That will get you one less tick than this, but it's a lot safer. Also, if you're lagging, stop at like half. It's not the biggest deal. So now we just wait around for the core to open. Typically, what you do in Foreman is you wait for the second mid-energy fungus. But yeah, because we finished when, when we did, we just stand around. There is nothing for us to do. Once you're really comfortable with Krosis, you can bring something to do once you're in this point of the fight. What a lot of people do is they'll bring like fletching stuff. That's something you can do. You bring, you know, headless arrows or whatever. But if that's for you to decide if that's what you want to do. I like to hang out and chill during this part of the fight, so that's usually what I do here. So we just saw a blue bomb, that means the next mechanic is going to be a stun, and the mechanic after is going to be the mid-energy fungus, so we're going to anticipate. So because I had, I didn't actually have my fire torch on, but this just shows you because I had the timber fungus, which is the wood cutting material, I got to burn that to free myself. So that is something that you can do. But again, it only works if you have the wood cutting material on you. Now, my movement here in this last part of the fight is pretty bad. What you want to do is you want to dive to this bottom step and then click on the statue. If you have escape, you can then use escape and it'll put you right next to the middle. Otherwise, you just walk back one step and then surge. Doesn't really matter. That's a very minor optimization, but that's what you can can do. This is my first time doing Krosis in a few months, so I totally forgot that. Okay, so now we are at the core. This core is fishing. Now, the cores have really weird click boxes. So you just want to be careful when you're doing the core to make sure that you're not clicking on random stuff. When you're in this part of the fight, the core is either going to glow red, glow white, or glow green. I, either the green or the white one is going to be blue if you're in carbon mode, which, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what blue looks like to carbon people, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But yeah, there's going to be red, which is the bad color. I don't know if it's clear to color bond people that there's a bad color. There's going to be two colors that aren't the bad color. For the good colors, you want to click them. For the bad color, you want to not click it. That's pretty much it. Because these have finicky click boxes, you want to hover your mouse above it because like these are vines here. You can't actually click on those vines, which is very annoying. You'll see here at some point I like misclick. 
yeah, there I just clicked in between the, the vines. So just make sure you hover your mouse over a clickable area and then just click it every time it glows the relevant colors. Now, something to keep in mind is that the hunter node in particular is very finicky about when you actually click. So whenever you're clicking for the hunter node, make sure you double click it. For whatever reason, if you click it on the wrong game tick, it just won't register. You double click it, completely solves that issue. And yeah, that is a Krosis kill. You saw here, I was a little bit late to the second energy fungus and we still hit the contribution point. So I got the max drop. That is Krosis. Every kill from here on out is going to go exactly the same. So yeah, hopefully this guide helps you. If you want to see more content on the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. It helps me in the algorithm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.